Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. This time on the JP side to check out what the Halloween 2022 event is all about. We have a new Liz, and I can finally, I have to stop, I, you know, I tried my best. But there's just no way to avoid it. The <laughs> This is a free a freebie that has the Pretender class in it. Pretender class is the new, um, new one we're getting for, I think anniversary coming up one of our first ones coming somewhere time around anniversary time for lost belt six um there's no avoiding it so now that there's a welfare i can just say yeah there's a pretender class now and we have a free unit of it so let's look into it huh that's gonna be today's video i hope you like it if you do you can leave a like comment down below tell me how you're feeling as always this is a free-to-play unit so always good to kind of keep them out and it's also a free-to-play unit of a brand new uh class type so that means everyone should be able to have one of that class type now so it'd be nice and uh, I know most people who watch me play NA, but if you're playing JP, tell me how you're liking the event, because it just literally came out. So, let's go. The event title is called Halloween Rebellion of 108 People, The Young Dragon and Her Adaption of Water. Uh, you need to clear Olympus if you want to participate in this Halloween, so... Get fucking grinding if you are not close to Olympus. If you want to get this spooky dragon that you see here. Okay, so let's see. Uh, in terms of the actual event, I always like to wait till the time comes there, so I just want to look at the new units. Actually, fun enough, we can look at the um, the other stuff first. There are strengthenings that are coming. Uh, she gets a strengthening and he gets a strengthening, which is nice, but we're here to look at some new stuff. Obviously, this is the 5C uh, redrop. Always drops one for Halloween. And it's always the one that is super uh, influential for art going forward. I cannot say why, but it's pretty clear when you look at it. The thing that immediately draws your eye is this amazing maid dress this man is rocking. Absolutely wonderful. Look at the T. Who wouldn't want this maid man in their life? Clearly. This is all what it's about. And yeah, this actual effect of the C, because it is does have an effect, <laughs> it's not just art you look at, is increase NP gauge by 4% every turn, increase NP damage by 15%, increase your crit, uh, critical damage by 15%, and then when it's max and limit broken, it's increase NP gauge by 5% every turn, increase NP damage by 20%, increase crit damage by 20%, so eh, not the greatest. I think there are better redrop CEs that have with actual good CE, uh, with good effects, but you can't beat the new Halloween art, that's for sure. Uh, next we have Lakeshore Heavenly Nymphs, which is a star regen plus 3 MP overcharge 100%, which is nice. Now that there are units that just give MP overcharge, this isn't as valued as I would say. They would probably need to do more than just kind of give you 3 stars. Hoeing with a sword! <laughs> There's no way that's the name of this C. The way that they made a C called Hoeing with a Sword. Let me look at these guys hoeing. Yeah, this is hoeing. These are just dudes being dudes. Grabbing pumpkins. Muscles out grabbing pumpkins. What a man does. What does a C actually do besides hoeing with sword? Gives HP regen and uh, NP generation up by 5%, which is, uh, eh. And then we have the event craft essences, which are Tiger Hunter Aesthetics, which is featuring Sanzong. Which is, this one is the one I like most. Oh, nope. That's apparently the wrong one. This is dancing on the lotus bloom. Oh, this is the site has it weirdly laid out, I guess. If I click this, will it go here? Yeah, weird. I guess they have whatever. Dancing on the lotus bloom. It ignores defensive buffs, increased posture performance, and then it increases crit damage by 15%. All right. Not the most groundbreaking thing for sure, but for the Halloween event, it does give you 10% up with a red. Uh, grind material and 20% when it's max on limit broken and then we have the other one which I'm gonna assume is called tiger hunting aesthetics which is art up by 10% crit damage up by 10% of star start stars uh, plus 15 actually this would be a decent bomb depending on how gain 20 crit stars all right not the worst actually for a event C having a star bomb is always nice um, especially one that you can just have for free there are better star bombs because obviously golden catches the carp is the best one because it gives you 50% starting NP and then you have 20 crit stars but th there's always a place for 20 crit stars I'd say it's always a good way of using it and the final one is called flowing pool of wine NP generation up 15% NP damage up by 5% and then starting NP is 30% and I'm gonna assume in max on limit broken it is 50% correct 
Nice! This one I actually really like for free-to-play CE. Very nice, very nice. And then we have the event command codes, which is Knight of the Abyss Abyssal Sanctuary, attacking with the engraved card, and fix curse by 500 on the target for three turns and gain three crit stars. The Azor Dragon's Knight's uh, section staff, engraved on the card star absorption, is 50%. And attacking with the engraved card removes one latest crit up buff from the target. Okay. Very specific thing, for sure. And then we have Shifu Sukun. Attacking with the engraved card, buff removals resistance up by 10% for one turn, and then restores HP by 100. Okay, very specific. Very weirdly specific, but sure. And now we can actually go into the units we have, so we'll look at the free SSR. I wonder if we have our kit available already. The Nine Tattooed Dragon Eliza, aka Liz, aka Liz Lily Lily, the second form of Liz. She is a pretender class. Um, I assume because she's pretending to be Liz. <laughs> she's not actually a Liz unit. That's my assumption anyway. I don't know anything about the story. I'm just taking it off base assumption. It is drawn by Wada Arco, but because you can tell by her eyes, she looks basically like Liz, but if Liz had uh, some kind of Rayquaza-looking dragon who was in the same style as either Cotton Candy. Actually, funny enough, I think I, when I told my brother, it kind of reminds me either of the fusion of Rayquaza and a trans flag, or the unicorn from Despicable Me 1. <laughs> it kind of looks like that too. It's a very cute dragon though. Very lovely. Who wouldn't want this? Face the worst difficulty. Play Fake Grand Order now. Active skill is skill 1 is Warcry Mount Leong EX. Increases uh, parties. Oh, I should mention here. Two quick cards, one arts card, two buster. Increases party's attack for three turns, increase the crit damage of allies with the lawful alignment for three turns, increase the MP damage of allies with the neutral alignment for three turns, increase MP generation rate of allies with the chaotic alignment for three turns, grants the party the Mount Liang trait except for self for three turns, increases own crit star absorption for one turn. It's 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, and then 500% absorption. Ah, uh, that's interesting that it's actually following lawful... It's funny that it has lawful, neutral, and chaotic, so I guess if you're lawful, neutral... Actually, what are you, my my lady here? What do you have? What is your alignment? Chaotic evil, so she will only get the chaotic NP rate of allies. Yeah, she's an ally, so... Huh, let me look at the alignments, because there's a lot of funky alignments. I wonder if there's any... Let me see, lawful, good... Is there any lawful neutral? No, I don't think they actually do that. It's called balance. So you can't have a unit that has all of them. And then we're not even bringing up there some units who are like lawful summer. Or lawful insane. Or lawful good and evil. What are you doing? <laughs> Fucking. Oh, I'm lawful. I'm good and evil at the same time. Okay, sure. Let's go with that. It really kind of depends on the coin toss. Anyway, next skill, second skill. Enormous Banquet Mount Liang EX charges MP gauge of Mount Liang allies, increases their max HP by three uh, for three turns. 500% chance to reduce their debuff resistance by 20% for three turns. Demerit Mount Liang is 20%. Max HP up is 2,000. Okay, seems mm, all right, all right. Uh, third skill, increases own crit... Hmm. Increase his own quick performance for three turns. Increase own buster performance for three turns. Increase own crit damage for three turns. 30%, 30%, 30%. Interesting that she has two skills that are basically like, I help the party, and then her third skill isn't. Alright. Um, Her passive skills are independent action B+, and then territory creation Mount Liang EX. Which increases zone art performance by 6% and then increases the star generation rate by 6%. Her third skill is a increased attack against assassins and her noble phantasm is a during Ellie Chan shooting star. The nine great azure dragon maidens meteoric strike sky. It is the one that summons all the Liz's onto the field. Pretty great. Anti song dynasty. <laughs> Take that song dynasty. Uh, nine hits. Deals damage to all enemies. Reduces their defense for t by 10% for three turns. Increases our crit star uh, generation for one turn. The damage is 300%, but you're going to get our MP5, so it's 500%. Increase on crit star generation rate for one turn. Increase on MP damage for one turn. 50% and 10%. Star rate is 50%. Damage is 10%. Okay. And let me see. So, of the extra classes, Pretender. What is Pretender good against? Pretenders have a base damage multiplier of 1%. Alter Egos take 2 times damage from Pretenders. Foreigners take less damage from Pretenders. Sabres, Archers, and Lancers take 1.5 damage from Pretenders. 
Riders, Caster, and Assassin take 0.5% damage. Berserkers take 2 times damage from Pretenders and deal 1.5 damage against them. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's nice to have a free one. Um, kind of, it's kind of weird not being able to use the unit because, but because she is Buster, that means she can be used with like all the Buster loopy dudes. So that means that the thing that's important here is how much does this six turn cooldown? You could in theory use her then. You get twenty percent point twenty percent. So chances are you would have to use a team of what is it two, two, two. Hmm, actually, would it be two? Yeah, you'd have to use one over on on the side for the obvious reasons and then you'd have to use two vinches and then you'd be able to just kind of blow stuff up and she has a good advantage against a lot of stuff so if you're definitely a fan of this she's definitely usable with the buster setup i think i don't see any reason why she wouldn't be 30 percent isn't the 20 percent isn't the most uh, actually she could probably also be used to also give them because i think vich also uses her mp is uh, a damaging one so you could use her with that so yeah i think it's kind of neat she works with Buster stuff for sure, but I think a lot of units work with Buster stuff, so it kind of works out. <laughs> Turns out you could use any Buster unit in the world when your supports are fucking busted as hell, and one of them gives you 70% NP, and the other one recharges your your shit, your skills. <laughs> Let's see, and her cooldowns are just turn 6 and turn 6, so it's not too bad. So yeah, I think this is a pretty cool unit for a Liz. And the free-to-play Liz's, I think she might actually be... Mm, is she the best? I'm, I'm not sure about that, actually. But she would be pretty good. I know some of the older Liz ones are not good anymore, but definitely some of the newer ones are pretty sick and all right. But either way, it's always nice to have like a free version of this class, because you never know when it might be useful or at least fun to just use them and mess around with stuff. So that's what I'll say about Eliza. Now let's move on to the other units, which including cl includes a man... Huang Fei Hu, who is one quick, two arts, two busters. His active skills are Prince Wu Cheng, increases his arts performance for three turns, increases his buster performance for three turns, grants self the Prince Wu Cheng who guards the kingdom status for three turns. He changes his own chaotic alignment into the lawful neutral. That's cool. To not to lawful neutral, to do lawful alignment. So that would make him from chaotic good to lawful good. Okay. Arts up is 20% and Buster up is 20%. Alright, that's okay. Golden-Eyed Divine Warbler A charges on MP gauge for 3 turns. Grants self gut status for 1 time 3 turns. If self has the lawful alignment, increase your critical damage. If he has the chaotic alignment, increase own NP generation rate for 3 turns. That's kind of cool. NP gen generation rate is 20%. The HP is 3000 when he revives. The crit damage is 50% and the chaotic NP rate is 50%. And his third skill is Multicolored Divine Ox EX. Increase on attack for 3 turns. Increase on crit damage for 3 turns. Grain crit stars every turn for 3 turns. And it's 30%, 30%, and 10 star regen. Pretty alright. And his passive skills are Magic Resistance D, Writing B+, Divinity C, Dragon Spear Technique B, and Bond of the Huang Family B. Alright. Cool. Third skill is a bonus against foreigners. And he is a buster. So let's see. Yeah, two poo, two buster cards. Oh god. Huang Fei Yu's Rebellion Heaven Changing Treasure Sword of Mo Ye. Oh hey, Mo Ye! He can be used with Sword Soul. So anyway, he deals damage to one enemy, five hits. At MP level one, it's 600%, and then if it's level five, it's a thousand. Increase on quick performance for three turns. Increase arts for, for three turns, increase buster performance for three turns, activates first, and of course it's only 10% because if it was any more, that'd be kind of crazy. So yeah, I think this guy's kind of interesting. The one thing that I'm always apprehensive about is when you're using this, um, this skill right here, where you're kind of like, he, you want to kind of go either or with him, MP rate. I think actually for the most part, you actually want the crit damage because he is a buster unit. That's kind of what you would want for the most part and not MP rate. Um, and then he, yeah, increased arts and yeah. Hmm, hmm. So I think, yeah, for the most part, you kind of want to use this skill first and then use the first skill and then third skill as well. Hmm. At least I think that's a cool kind of design for a unit. It's something different. I think for the most part, you would probably always want to give him... 
Well, actually, because he's a buster card, you can use Vich, and it's possible for you to just give him both. So you can use your second skill, increase your lawful alignment, and keep it base form, which would mean he's chaotic. So he would gain NP rate for the beginning. And then over time, you, you use Vich, use all your three skills, then you use Vich, and then you get this back, and then you'll be able to have, you'll be lawful by that point. So you'll get 50% crit damage, so it's possible for you to have both at the same time. Hmm. I mean, yeah, that's mm, that's pretty cool. I don't know. I like this guy. He seems pretty all right. He has a single target servant, so these aren't the best of mine. Uh, I'm not sure what specific... Th he's not really anti-anything. He seems just kind of be used if you ever just need to hit someone really hard with a writer. You would just kind of use him. So that's an interesting... It's going to be interesting to see when there's like challenge quests or like specific boss fights where you can use him. Where you would want to use a writer. So... There you go, Huang Fuye Hiyu. That's him. And here's the SSR Hyunzio, the assassin who has a thousand horses. Ah, uh, she has animal characteristics too, which is funny. She's two quicks, one arts, two buster. Just no arts units this time around, huh? Just all quick and buster. Double clubs A, increase own quick performance for three turns, increase own buster performance for three turns, grant self on attack at the activation buff for three turns, increase your crit star generation by 20% for three turns when you're attacking with a quick card activates first, grant self on attack activation buff for three turns, increase own crit damage by 20% for three turns when attacking with a buster card activates first, 30%, 30%. Cool. Second skill, Heavenly Force Star A. Ignores invincibility for three turns. Increase on attack for three turns. Increase on critical star absorption rate for one turn. 30% and 500% absorption. Sensitive Metal EX. Grant self evasion for two attacks, three turns. Increase on buff removal resistance for three turns. Charges on MP gauge. 30% MP gauge. 100% buff removal resistance. Her passive skills are Present Concealment C, Writing B, and Phantasmal Beast Possession C which is an increase of card star absorption of buster cards by 10%. Her third skill is a bonus against archers. Mm -hmm. And then her noble phantasm is actually quick. Eight hits, deals damage to all enemies, deals 150% extra damage against enemies with the evil alignment, and then 40% chance to stun them. And her damage is 600% at level one, and then at level five it's 1,000. Increase on quick performance for one turn, activates first. Charge is 100%. Uh, quick uh, charges 100%, you get 20%. If you get it all the way to level 5, it is 40%. Okay, so let's see. Ah, uh, hmm. She would be pretty It seems like she would be pretty good for uh, quick looping. The one thing I'm unsure of is how good she would be. The reason is, is that she actually should be perfectly fine because she has, um, she hits a decent number of times. The one thing that I'll always say is the problem with a lot of like quick in the current meta until we get a an even better quick support that gives them NP generation rate, which is funny because they just got one, but it's kind of a different thing, is that the units usually they need to have something, and the something is they have to have to charge their own NP gauge, but it needs to be something like big, like 50%, because 30% is just enough to barely miss it. Uh, as I learned with Ushi and her NP chart in her specific one, it's usually not enough. So you also need a lot of NP rate at the same time. NP rate is usually the best thing you can give to a quick unit because that will just help them a lot. Uh, she doesn't have any of that. She does have an ability to charge her own NP gauge. And she does have seem to have a lot of ways to just increase her quick performance, which is pretty nice. And her attack as well. Hits eight times, deals damage. If they're evil alignment, it's an extra 150% damage. Yeah, she should be able to loop, so she should be pretty good. That's just what I'm seeing based off of her specific looks here. Again, the things that I'm always a little bit hesitant about is specifically because of my like use of certain cards is whether or not they'll be good for looping. It can be kind of a toss-up a lot of the time. Um, but I think she should be pretty solid for it. Though Assassin, again, is... Maybe it's just because of my bad inter... Like, let me just show her real quick, just to show what I mean. When it comes to looping, and I guess specifically Assassins. Um, and maybe it's not the most fair comparison, because it is a 4-star, but... Let me see. Ooh, she has a 40% charge up to her. And she is not... It's not good enough. And I have her, like, at NP4. Still not good enough to actually loop with her. But she doesn't really also have like a lot of like she has like 30% quick which isn't a lot her increase to attack is not a lot and then she only hits five times so yeah i think with that in mind 
Mm, yes, then you should be able to loop with her. Because this is, unit is getting a lot more attack up for a quick performance, 30%. And then you also count this, increase the attack by another 30%, and then the third skill doesn't really do anything, but this ability here increases the quick performance for one turn, it's an additional 20%. Uh, you factor in is that they are dealing the same amount of damage, but she is hitting more, which gives her more chance to actually gain NP generation off that. So I think with that kind of in mind, she should be able to loop, no problem. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I think she also looks pretty cool. Even though I was just complaining of the fact that this assassin has like 17 horses on her beck and call and yet she is considered an assassin. That's just a fate thing at this point. Fate really likes to make a unit like seem pretty clearly like this should have been this other class. I don't understand what makes her assassin if her entire thing is attacking on assassin like on a horse. <laughs> but who knows. But yeah, that's how I'll, those are all the units for this Halloween. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to be planning this because by the time two years kind of comes around, it's going to depend on a lot of things. I am definitely interested to get this Liz though. I always like Halloween events and I like this Liz and I like her art and I kind of like her class as well. Plus you can look at her background right here. That's adorable. Look at this. That's Halloween, man. That's the Halloween spirit, even though she is technically not dressed up for Halloween and... It would probably be really nice if we had a traditional Halloween servant. But hey, Japan doesn't celebrate Halloween. So the fact that we get any form of a Halloween event is good enough for me. But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. As Especially, damn, this video ended up being a long-ass video. If you've made it this far, you can always leave a like and comment down below to help me out. It sure helps out the channel, helps me out a bunch. And you can always tell me what you feel, because it's always nice to kind of see what people feel about the current stuff on JP and stuff like that. But that's it for me, everyone. I will see you guys in the next one. Until next time, peace out.